Hi, my name is Dan and I'm one of the DT evangelists here at Digital Tutors. In this video, we're going to look at a question from one of our users, Adeptus, on how to troubleshoot an issue where the sun disk appears to be in front of our clouds for a physical sun and sky. So here to illustrate this, basically I have a very simple scene. Um, I basically come in and dropped in a default physical sun and sky, kind of adjusted the sun direction so that we'll have a nice uh, kind of an evening look where we have our and then we also have a plane here that I've set up a procedural texture on that'll be our clouds okay so let's come in and go ahead and render this out just to see how it looks right now so this is how it looks uh, by default and it kinda looks like our Sun here is actually in front of the clouds so if we were to uh, kind of want to come in and start to troubleshoot this uh, you notice I went in and saved this render so we can come back and compare later on uh, let's first come in and try applying a few different textures to this plane just to make sure that we understand exactly what is going on. So if we come into our hyper shade here and take a look at this uh, cloud material that I have set up here. Uh, basically I have a couple like a fractal, a noise plugged into a layered texture and then that's plugged into the transparency of my uh, plane. I'll come into the ramp here. Let's go ahead and take this white color drop it to black so that way if I come in uh, we should see that the cloud st strength actually gets uh, more intense towards the end here uh, which will help us to see whether or not this Sun is actually behind that geometry or not so as we can see it's definitely getting darker back here and it's actually still really really bright Sun it's really difficult to see so uh, this was before and this is after we can tell there's a little bit of difference uh, but it still looks like our Sun is actually in front of our geometry well let's try uh, another texture on here just to see if that helps us begin to troubleshoot this a little bit better so I'm gonna come in and let's just create something like a simple Lambert material and go ahead and uh, clear out my workspace just make it a little bit easier to see here bring back my work there bring that in all right here we go all right so let's apply this Lambert to the plane go ahead and right click and do assign material to selection so that's applied to our plane now so if we open up our render view we can see that our Sun is completely hidden by the geometry so uh, this tells us that the Sun is indeed behind our geometry as it should be um, so it might have something to do with our transparency. So let's try bringing up the transparency on this Lambert just a little bit. Just a little bit there. We can go ahead and render this out. And as we can see, uh, it still kind of looks like our sun is uh, in front of our plane. Although really what it is, if, as we saw before, where we had no transparency on there, we know that the sun is behind our plane. Uh, but what we need to do now is to start to deal with the intensity of the sun so it doesn't look like it's in front of our plane. So I'm going to come in and once again reapply my clouds to this plane so we have our cloud look. And while I'm at it, I'm going to come in and bring my ramp back since we know that's not really the issue. We just need to deal with the intensity here in this particular case. So let's come into our render settings and then open up my physical sun and sky settings here and let's come down to the sun disk intensity and that's going to control the actual intensity of our sun or the the actual sun disk here that we see okay so uh, we can go ahead and get rid of this render um, so this is the point that we're at right now let's start uh, bringing our sun disk intensity down so uh, may maybe drop it by something like half so this is a uh, sun disk intensity of 0.5 and this was before we can see that there's a little bit of difference there if we compare uh, before and after uh, but we could probably stand to bring this down a little bit more uh, I'm gonna bring it down really low maybe something like 0.15 and there we go that was, looks a whole lot better where it's not nearly as blown out so this was before and this is uh, after we can tell that we still have our Sun so we can still see it but it's not nearly as blown out as it was before and uh, before it was kind of looking like it was actually in front of our clouds well now it's going to be not nearly as bright 
Now, if we are still having an issue where our sun actually is showing up uh, in front of our geometry for some reason, another method that we could use would be to simply hide the sun disk and then composite it back in, since it's basically just a glowing sphere. So let's take a quick look at how we can do that. Now, I'm happy with the intensity, that it, the way it is here, uh, 0.15. Let me go ahead and my utilities bring back my uh, physical sky node. So we have our intensity at 0.15. Let's come in and set up a render layer that we can use to composite our sun disk. So I'll come into my channel box. Go ahead. I'm just going to copy my master layer. And this will be my um, no sun disk render layer. Something like that. And basically what we can do on this layer here is we can come in and set a layer override by right clicking and then we can come in and set our sun disk intensity to zero so if we come in and just do a quick preview render here of what it looks like with our sun disk intensity at zero we can see that we no longer can see our sun disk so basically when we render this out we're going to get two different images here where we have our sun disk and then we have a copy without the sun disk. So just in case we had some animation on there, it'd be a little bit easier um, to have that included in our shot. So let's take a hop over to Photoshop real quick just to see how it would, would look when we composite this back together. Um, actually, before I do that, I want to make sure I can come in and batch render this out. So I'll go up here, render this out, and then I'll pause the video while it renders and come back in Photoshop so we can composite those back together. All right, so our render has finished. Let's go ahead and hop into our images folder here where we have our two render layers. I'm going to hop into Photoshop as well. Let's go ahead and pull these guys in. So we have our physical sun and sky render that was created with the sun disk. And we'll also have our uh, physical sun and sky that has no sun disk. Okay, so we have these two. I'm going to go ahead and pull these into the same file. real quick way of doing that is go to File, Scripts, and Load Files into Stack. And we can just go ahead and add our open files, click on OK, and Photoshop will go through and automatically add both of our files into one uh, image there for us. So we can close out of those, and basically we have our two layers now. Uh, so now all we would really have to do is to come in and mask out our sun. Now if we notice when we um, kind of look in here on at our sun disk we notice that there's a little bit of glow so we'll probably want to compensate for that so we can come in and maybe create a circular selection add a new layer mask and we can see that that area gets um, cut out so we only have our sun here now if we need to um, kind of increase this we could do that select our mask increase that little bit basically what I did was I basically went to my I went to my transform tool by hitting control T there we go something like that and now what I would like to do is to come in I'll hold down control and select my layer mask and then come into my selection modify feather and now we could try a feather radius of 15 see how that looks and we can hit uh, Alt backspace here in order to kind of feather this out a little bit. Just so it kind of starts to blend in with the other image. Okay, so what we've done is we've basically added our physical sun and sky to its own layer that we can then composite in. So if we take a look at this layer of just our sun disk, we can see what it looks like. If I hold down Alt and take a look at our mask, we can see what our mask looks like. Um, and it's just a really quick way of coming in and being able to composite the actual sun disk from the physical sun and sky into its own layer so that we can do whatever we may need to do with it for our project. So that's just a quick look at how we can begin troubleshooting an issue where our sun disk appears to be in front of the clouds by first testing various textures. And then if we need to, we can actually render it out into its uh, another s render layer and then composite those back together. Now, if you want to take a more in-depth look at how to set up Mental Ray's physical sun and sky feature, check out the introduction to Mental Ray in Maya course.